Hello, welcome back to Lee Central. And it's Christmas has just passed. We all had some Christmas money. We've all got some models in the post. And I'm going to take the opportunity to unbox what is an eagling weighted arrival, and that is the new Bachman Rustom Rapier, uh, Ransom Rapier 45 ton steam crane. I've gone for the BR Red example, number 38-803, uh, the one that was based at Crew, although there was a similar one based at Haymarket. So we'll get this unboxed and we'll take a proper look at the model. Okay, so that's the crane out of the box in the raised position as it comes in the box. The model comes with this guide, which shows you the couplings of how the support wagon is joined, the match wagon is joined to the main bogey of the crane. Also, your extra detailing parts for three links and pulses, which are in this bag here with the long beam and extra ladders and also the turning thing which I'm going to have to get out of the bag soon and then on the second page it goes to show you the makeup of how to, how to fit the accessories to the hook and also the parts to remove to fit the little turning handle to adjust the jib and the height of the hook as you can see on these two diagrams here quite a well illustrated little book this then there's the moving parts that are posable I'll get to playing with them over the course of the video there's also um, information there on how to re-rig the crane in case of any breakages and these pictures are really detailed, they've even got all the rivet detail of the crane in the pictures, it's a nice little touch in the booklet is that. So I'll have a proper read of that first and then we'll get to posing the crane in the down position. But what I will take you through first is the accessory packs that have come with this crane. It's a stand. It's a solid box by the way, the blister pack is quite solid to get together as you probably saw when I went to open the box. Uh, that wasn't just the combination of my hand, it is quite solidly held together. The Runner wagon, which I'll take a look at later in the video, is just on standard tension locks, and then there's these hooking couplers for the attachments. Uh, first impressions are fantastic, but we'll get the crane put in the down position, and then I'll take him for a closer look.
Okay, so that's the crane in the lowered position. One thing I will point out that you may notice uh, when I was doing the lowering is well, before you lower the main jib, run the hook out a bit further. It does say that in the book. I missed it the first time of reading. Uh, so Just so it lowers right and you don't get any slackening in your cables. But that did lead me to find this detailed area here, which when you're lowering the actual hook, all of this assembly here all moves as it should, including this brilliantly detailed little angle indicator. The piston moves, the wheels move, all this rodding, everything in here moves. It's a fantastically detailed, fantastically functional little piece of kit. I really enjoy pieces of modelling like this, where it's not only functional but looks the part as well. And this is a fantastic piece of work from Batman here. The but just to focus on the main superstructure first before we move into all the interesting gubbings in there. Start at this back pony truck, which as you can see coming around on the end, there's the holes there for the hook and vacuum pipe and the black and white black the black and yellow stripes are very crisp as well as where the red meets the stripes that's uh, that's very crisp as you come to expect from the operator the uh, manufacturers these days then we move up on the back of the crane itself you can see these nicely painted rapier signs and these little boiler these little boiler access plates are actually where you put in this little knob you see the magnet there on the end of it as I, when I was lowering it uh, you just place that magnet on them that pulls them off I find it's easy I put them on the uh, workbench while I was lowering the crane but you can leave it stuck to the end there and turn it you then have on the top this pausable funnel which should be in that position when running and also the pausable cab roof which would be paused in the down position while running which like so is how the crane would be in running form you then come to the outrigger points which they just pull out simply I've pulled one out here just to show you and then you fit the yellow foot underneath I haven't got round to doing that yet but to run along the chassis uh, you can see all the printed detail there on those works plates and I've got to show you these which are etched brass versions of the plates for the side of the crane that is a wonderfully detailed little piece and then you've got all the black ones as well in that little pack so get round to fitting them eventually to bring them bring this model even further up as you can see the all the separately fitted rivet detail there moving along onto the other truck that's very similar to the other I'll show you the top here as you can see it's, it's basically hollow and there's quite a lot of metal weight in those but uh, I do like the the rodding from the wheels through here from the black and red from the white and red wheels all this black interlinking down here that's a very, that's a very nice touch um, considering we've never had anything like this before really and then you've got that rail there which is for the yellow beam that comes in the accessory pack that can be paused in that little slot there and then moving on to the match wagon which is the reason I've gone for this one it's the one with all the toolboxes on in red the gap is a little wide due to the tension locks at the moment but I intend on closing that up because this is just going to be a paused model eventually the idea being that as I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm going to try and build a one foot by three foot layout for cheaper than this crane which leads us to the question that has been asked is this worth the price tag and I can say on my first impressions Definitely, I got I got this at a slightly discounted price due to uh, club memberships and the like. But still, the RRP on this model does match the level of detail you're getting. You may say this is a two loco wagon, but when you consider the amount of design and skill that has gone into this piece here alone, it is worth the money. The other thing I'll bring you to in the next shot is also the interior of the cab is also completely detailed. 
there has not Backman have not missed a trick with this it was well it was well worth the wait and when you see the amount of detail in it and the amount of moving parts that they've actually gone to and actually made that stable enough to support being moved around it does give you an impression of the amount of work that was undertaken while we're in this PC you can see the drilled holes in all of all of the uh, wheels and pulleys also that specially detailed that very detailed base with the the rotation system also the rivets on the deck and also the cross hatching I don't know whether the, the camera's picking up but you've actually got the individual pieces on the cross hatched plates there they're individual little dots that's a that's another great piece of molding and a bit, and especially on a die cast lump like this chassis is fairly simple below the running plate but uh, these cranes are in real life I'm lucky enough to have got up close with a actual example of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway and I've had a look at some close-up photos I've taken of that and I cannot find fault with this. So I'll take I'll give you a look inside the cab and then we'll get the crane. Now I'm gonna get the crane posed up in an angle position and in a as working format and take you through it a bit more. Okay, so although the crane is the biggest new arrival, the one thing with Christmas is nobody ever knows what to buy me, so they always buy me railway books. And this is the comprehensive collection from this year. Nice one, a nice pictorial one there from around the world. It's a nice one, that. There's also that one I'm going to find quite interesting. It's a complete history of from the grouping right through to the end of BR Steam in chronological order so there's bound to be some nice pictures down the ages in there i've just turned nicely to a caledonian 460 which should be of interest especially with the eras that we model at club last days of scottish steam that'll come in very handy with the engage project i've mentioned so that one's going to get quite a good airing there's then always worth having a couple of these knocking around for picture references you never know where there's going to be a picture of a local a specific local you're modeling so the, and then where there's like little drawings like this that um, if you can get the scale for you can work out stuff that you're modeling always very handy to have there's a drawing of a Gladstone there which I think might be close to 176 we'll check the scales on that but having as many drawings as possible like this intricate photo of the fourth bridge there there's things like that are really handy there's then this large pictorial book one off the missus which has some fantastic photos in there which is actually encouraging me to get back into my drawing again which uh, has some nice pose pictures with like surrounds like that where they're nicely framed and uh, some out of the ordinary angles from around the world there like there's a lot of there's a lot of Europe, European stuff Chinese there so that's that's another nice book and then also I picked up these two Scottish steam books from a local charity shop which uh, one of them is a, a complete book of Highland Railway drawings 
and the other one is photos from the 20s. So they're proving invaluable reference points down at the club and also in, ne needling me towards actually building locomotive kits, which should be an interesting endeavour because the ones I want aren't actually available in kit form at the moment. So we're doing some interesting research and there may be some interesting projects coming up on that front. Okay, so I've given my ratings there. As you can see, it's quite a high rating for this crane. And back with it now, I'll just bring you out and we'll have a look at what's going to be going on over January update. The detailing parts will be fitted to the B1. The two Parkside Dundas steam hero vans will be transferred up. The PAL van is actually going to go into red now to match the crane. The, there'll be more work on the next VEA van there on the platform. The pannier will be going to Gary down at club for some weathering. And the building mock-ups are back up on Leeds Central. With the way my hand is at stuff, I can do little detailing parts on the desk and uh, work in plastic art and things like that. Just uh, any heavy lifting and stuff doesn't really constitute with it. So I'm having a look at these buildings again and getting some more of these fitted, uh, designed and fitted up so there'll be plenty to come in the January issue but for now I'll just leave you with a couple more shots of the crane uh, I hope you enjoyed your modelling, have a happy new year and I hope to see you liking, like, like, share and subscribe and watch more videos of Lee Central in the new year Cheers!